Hello fellow human, hope you guys have a great day and let's read some r slash I don't work your lady stories. To the first one, I don't work your lady, but yeah, I'll be your server. This happened to a friend of mine, who I shall call Steve, although that isn't his real name. Steve works in a hardware slash DIY store in a retail park, where are loads of shops and restaurants surrounded by a large car park. He has a lunch break at about 1 p.m. every day for an hour, during which time he normally gets a sandwich or something quick, simple and cheap. On this particular day, back in 2017, he'd arranged to meet his girlfriend for lunch at one of the nearby restaurants, and had even ordered the meal in advance so the weekends they arrived, they'd be served pretty quickly. He'd been to the restaurant many times and knew the manager and the waitstaff pretty well. Cast S for Steve, Gia for Steve's girlfriend, K for entitled rude Karen, and WS for any of the waiting staff. Steve and his girlfriend had finished their meal and paid the bill, and now his girlfriend had gone to the toilet, so Steve is just waiting for her. There are only a handful of customers at this time. Then Karen walks in with her kids. She spots an empty table next to Steve's table and notices that Steve is in a uniform. She sits down, gets her kids settled, while Steve is just staring out a window. Break is over! Back to work then! She yaps, clapping her hand together to get his attention. Steve panics, suddenly thinking that he's been there too long and he's actually late. He checks his watch and realizes that it's only half one and he still has 30 more minutes. Uh, sorry, he says. I've got half an hour left on my break and... But she cuts him off, saying with a raised voice, Well, you can take my order and go back to your break. Hop to it! while aggressively swiping at him but missing. It suddenly dawns on Steve that Karen thinks he works in the restaurant and starts to explain that I don't work here, lady, getting as far as but I don't before being cut off again. Karen shouts, I don't care if you don't work on your break, I want my order now, and fails again to swipe at him. Steve carries a notepad and pen with him as they occasionally help him in his job. He whips these out, stands up and says, yeah, sure, why not? As he does this, he's gesturing to the waiting staff to not come to the table for a minute or two, and the waiting staff are giggling as they've worked out what he's up to. Even the manager, who's heard Karen's shouting, has caught on and is watching. Steve listens to Karen's order while writing on his pad, except he isn't writing her order, but a bunch of random words. At that moment, girlfriend returns stopping halfway to the table and sees Steve is up to some shenanigans and that the waitstaff and at least a couple of customers are all watching. Steve finishes taking the order and turns around, intending to go back to his break and sit down just to piss Karen off, but he sees his girlfriend and instead walks towards her. She already has her bag and no jacket anyway, being as it is summer and rather flamboyantly says, are you ready to go, darling? And proceeds to walk straight out the restaurant, turning around to see Karen still sat down, staring daggers at him, and tears off her order from his pad and throws it in the bin by the door. Unfortunately, that is where the story ends, so I don't know in detail how Karen reacted to that, but Waitstaff said she went to the bin to dig out her order, shouted profanities at everyone, and left without ordering. I wish I could have seen the look on her face as he balled up her order and walked out with his girlfriend. On to the second story. Uh, there was a fire. I'm a fire investigator for insurance companies. I was working a fire in an auto body shop in the middle of nowhere. I spent most of my days alone working and this one was no different. I'd been there 4 or 5 hours at this point and I was digging through some debris looking for an alligator clamp to a battery charger under what was left of this car that left to charge overnight. The fire happened in the middle of the night, so the fire department had cut through the overhead doors in order to get inside. And since it was much easier to just take off the plywood, they used to cover the hole in the door and climb through, that's what I did. The inside was coated with smoke and three cars had essentially completely burned. 
So I'm kneeling on the ground with a shovel in my hand covered in ash when I hear a voice saying, Hello, is anyone there? Which scared the ever-loving crowd out of me. Being alone for hours in a dark burned building can leave you a little on edge. I get up from what I was doing and there is a lady standing about four feet away from me. She looks me up and down and says, What happened here? I kind of glanced around and said, uh, there was a fire? And she said, ow, that sucks. Then tossed me her keys and said, I need an oil change and a tire rotation. I told her that I didn't work there, that I was a fire investigator, and that the place wouldn't be open for a while since, you know, they had the massive ducking fire she had to climb through to cut open overhead door to get into. She then asked me, well, when will you guys be open? You can just do it then. I again told her I didn't work there, I was a fire investigator, and she'd have to come back later when the actual owners of the place were there, and it wasn't just me by myself. Mind you, I'm wearing a fire helmet, fire boots, and latex gloves, and it wasn't like this was a small fire, this place was cooked. I handed her back her keys, and she just kind of gave me a weird look and said, Oh, okay. Then climbed back through the cut open overhead door. It was one of the weirdest moments I've ever had on a scene. I've gotta say, that Karen was so dense. On to the third story. Lady thinks I work at Disney because I was trading pins with my daughter. So, my family is very fortunate to live very close to Disney World. Every year, when they have their Florida residence, four-day passes we go. This year, my daughter and I decided to try pin trading. Our first day, we stopped outside of the entrance to Disney to use the bathroom. I waited outside with my two daughters, three years and six months, and decided to practice how to do the pin trading with my three years old while we waited for my husband to come out. Let me also say I looked nothing like how the cast members at Disney looked. I had a Weenie the Pooh tank top, black shorts, and a Disney lanyard with pins, and on my back, I had an ITA bag full of pins I didn't plan on trading. I also had two strollers in front of me. No one should have mistook me for a cast member. After doing some mock trading with my daughter, a little boy probably around 8 asked to look at my pins. I showed him the ones on my lanyard, since I keep all my pins I want to trade on there. He didn't seem to be interested in my pins on my lanyard, but soon noticed my Eta bag. Boy, um, can I see those pins? Me, well, sure, but I don't want to trade these. I show him the pins in my bag and say again how I don't trade those. He soon spots a nightmare before Christmas pin that's actually my husband's. My attempt of trying to get him into pin trading too. Boy, I want this one! Me, uh, I'm sorry, that one isn't mine to trade and you can pick any of these. I motion to my lanyard while trying to now keep my 3 years old from running off into the park. I soon notice the kid's mom coming towards me. I was a little relieved hoping she would pull him away from me. Mom, Ow, oh, are you trading? How fun! Boy, Mom, I want that one and she won't trade with me! Mom, well, she has to. It's Disney's rules. At this point, my anxiety had taken over. At Disney, the cast member have to trade their pins with anyone who asks to trade. Other guests do not. I sign, trying to calm myself down. Me, um, the cast members have to trade, but I do not. He can trade one of the ones on my lanyard, but my back holds the pins that I don't want to trade. Mom. You're not an exception to the rule. Trade with my son or I'm going to report you to your manager. Me, do you seriously think I'm a cast member? Mom, you were just trading with that little girl, so it's obvious you are. Me, uh, I was just practicing trading with my daughter. Mom, wait right here. I'm going to get your manager and we'll settle all this out. I didn't say anything. I was so dumbfounded. I'm here struggling with a 3 years old and a baby and she thinks I'm working? All I could think is that maybe she didn't actually think that? Maybe she was trying to manipulate me to trade with her son, I don't know. My husband came out of the bathroom before she came back. I wasn't going to sit there waiting for her. 
Lucky Disney is big enough that I didn't see her for the rest of the day. I'm still so confused, at least it didn't get violent, and I was being able to enjoy the rest of the day without anyone else thinking I was working there. Well, the Florida heat probably fried her brain. On to the fourth story. I don't work here, lady. You think you can talk to someone like that? I had gone shopping to the Mart of Walls and was browsing the electronics department. I was kneeling down to look at something as I'm very tall and I don't enjoy bending down too much. There was a cry of pain in the next aisle and a woman yelling, Do you give me that crap and do your darn job! I was wearing headphones and didn't hear the initial exchange but I definitely heard the shouting. I took my headphones off and heard a young girl crying and trying to explain to the woman that she didn't work there. The woman, hereafter known as C, you know what I mean. The girl will be known as YG for the young girl. Me is me. A bit of information about me. I'm a near 7 foot tall behemoth of a man. Think heavy from Team Fortress 2. Look it up if you're unfamiliar with the character. Complete with shaved head and ability to imitate a Russian accent. I am obsessed with different accents and love to make people laugh by pulling one out at random. I walked around the corner and see C holding YG by the hair and shaking her while screeching something about treating customer better. You know the idiot Karen Spiel. I decided to have a little fun with C and perhaps scare her like she scared this poor child. You have to imagine I'm speaking in a thick, heavy Russian accent. Me. What the hell is going on? Why are you pulling hair of my knees? C, who had the good sense to let go of the girl when she saw the hulking Russian monster looming over her. Uh, she, she, she was being very rude and wouldn't help me. Me, still in angry Russian mode. Oh, she does not work for the store, stupid. You better leave before I call the police and have you arrested for assault. C couldn't run away fast enough. I asked YG if she was okay and she said she was, then asked what happened to my accent. I explained how I only use it to try and put the fear of God into C. YG laughed and thanked me for coming to her rescue. It was at this point a manager had arrived, probably called by an employee, asking what was going on. YG and I explain and he asked if we wanted to call the police and have the woman charge. YG declined and said, C has probably learned more of a lesson from being confronted by an angry Russian beast than she would from an assault charge. I figure, being as big as I am, it is not only my duty as a total bastard, but my duty as a decent-ish human being to help the young people when the old seas are being seized to them, LMAO. <laughs> oh, absolutely brilliant! I have no idea why people think that kind of behavior is okay. On to the fifth story. My wife is going into labor? Good luck with that. Hangs up. So this isn't exactly my story, but my boss's, but I was there the whole time it was happening. I work at a small pizza place in a small town in Australia as a casual worker. This happened about three months ago, and I had been working there for a while now, so some odd things had happened, but not as weird as this. This particular night, everything was normal, but I'll skip into the details. Working in the store, there's me, a few other people, and the boss on shift, the phone rings, and we assume for someone to order, and everyone but boss is busy cutting pizzas, making pizzas, etc. The boss goes over and answers the phone. The shop is small, so you can normally overhear the person on the phone. Hello, thank you for calling, store name, boss name speaking, how can I help you tonight? The customer talks, then I overhear the boss sounding quite concerned to reply. Uh, sorry sir, can you please repeat that? Me, being the nosy person I am, I walked around the corner and she noticed me and put the phone on speaker so I could listen to whatever was going on. I said, I need someone over here right away, this is happening now! I assume it wasn't a prank call at this point, which we get way too often because he sounded generally distressed. This to which my boss replied, uh, sure, sir, what pizzas can I get for you? There was then a pause for a few seconds and the guy yelled into the phone. 
Are you serious? I need an ambulance now. My wife is going into labor and the baby is coming right now. My boss, obviously not knowing what to say, just quickly blurts, uh, good luck with that, sir, and immediately hangs up. So basically, this guy called the pizza store instead of calling emergency services. My only guess is he had us and them on speed dial, but to this day, neither me or my boss knew if he got to the hospital with his wife on time. Well, you can deliver the baby in 30 minutes or it's free! That's it for today, fellow humans. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys next time.